Okay, we're ready to lap the valves now. And even if you replace the valve, you still want to do this. These aren't very bad at all. So it ain't going to take much. You put a little bit of compound on the seat. Don't take much on this. It really don't take much of this stuff at all to work. Just make sure you don't get none on the valve stem. If you do, you'll eat up the valve guide. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. I use one of these uh, tools here. And it just sticks on the top of the valve like this. And you turn it like you're starting to fire like this. do it like that until the sound changes and then take your rag here wipe off the valve face and the seat too we'll do that in a second you want to look at it here check for any rough spots or pitted places this one looks real good I'm gonna do it one more time just to make sure and uh, it'll be good to go now you don't want to put the valves back in until you put the the oil sump back on because your camshaft will give and that'll mess up your valve clearance and you got to set the valve clearance before you put the springs in so we're going to go ahead and i'll go ahead and finish doing this i'm just going to do the same thing again you just keep doing that until the valves look real good i got another video on it you can check that out for more tips on that and uh and after you get it done it's ready to go back in but uh, like I said, we'll go ahead after we get both of these lapped in, we'll go ahead and get the new rings on the piston and drop the piston back in and hook it up and get the sump back on. So I'll get back to you here right after I get this done. Okay, I got the new rings here. Tells you which ring goes where. I'm going to go ahead and start taking the, the old rings off. What you want to do, you can get it like this. peel it off like that and you want to do that on each one of them and these rings weren't too bad because the engine didn't burn a whole lot of oil just smoke now and then but all the gaskets were leaking on it so I figured while it was apart I'd go ahead and put new rings in it didn't cost too much anyway like I said this is aluminum bore engine so you have to use chrome rings so let me get these other ones off here and your oil rings basically the same it's a little bit bigger and you got this uh folded plate all the way around it and once you get it out it's basically the same you can kind of kind of see it there now the new ring's a little bit different this is the oil ring that was on it it has this piece of metal that goes behind it like this the new one i got is a three-piece oil ring this piece goes on first and you got two small rings that go over top of it so we'll go ahead and put this one first in the oil groove and you want to walk these back on about like you did same way you take them off I'm not going to do it on camera but it will just sit down in there on each side of this like that okay I got the middle ring here this is what the oil ring is supposed to look like after it's installed you pretty much do these backwards they make a special tool for this to make it easier it's called a ring expander the easiest way is to start in the first groove and walk it over to the second one you can use a small screwdriver carefully to help pry it over here into the next ring as so long as you're careful with it what I mean is just gently use it to pry up on it like this you're not going to hurt nothing just don't scratch the top part of it you want to do that and get it around in the ring here it should go in there fairly easy once you get it started and something else I forgot to mention when you put your get ready to put your rings in there you want to check to make sure your ring gap is correct you don't want it no more than ten thousandths on a fresh rebuild and if you take an engine apart to check the rings you got a gap more than thirty thousandths that needs to be rebuilt so ten 
So anywhere between 10 and 30 thousandths or more needs to be rebuilt. Anything between 3 and 10 thousandths is a right at spec for a fresh rebuilt engine. Alright, I just measured these. This is the original ring here. It's got 16 thousandths gap. The new ring has right at 6 thousandths, so it's right within spec. So. Okay, I got all the rings installed. Now the important thing is you want to offset your ring gaps. You got one gap here, one gap here, and the other gap here. But since it's oil ring, don't really have a, it's got actually three gaps. I'm just going to use these little markers as a gap. So you got one here, one here, and one here. The way they're offset. But if they're all lined up, you'll lose compression through it. Okay, so now we're ready to drop the piston back in. You need a ring compressor tool here. And you want to get motor oil or STP or Lucas or anything like that and put it all over it, make sure it gets worked in the rings. All this does is prevent everything from starting up dry and makes it easier for the piston to slide in the cylinder. And you want to double check your ring gaps just to make sure they're offset. And drop your piston in. Turn it a little bit, get that oil to seat in. You can use just motor oil if you'd rather. That's all you have. Don't use grease or anything like that. You can get that as tight as you can on there. And take a, the handle of a hammer. Gently tap it. If the rings are compressed enough, it will slide right in, but they're not in this case. Okay, you see, I just got one ring holding me up now. And there it is. Now we gotta get the rod lined up with the crankshaft and get ready to tighten it back down. And you wanna put STP all over the crankshaft too on the journal. Okay, now I'm ready to put the rod cap back on. But since the tab got kind of chewed up on this, I'm gonna take the bolts out and turn that around. Both bolts are the same on this one. That way I got a fresh tab to work with here. Should make it a little easier. You make sure this is make sure this is good and clean. Put a pretty good glob of motor oil or in this case I'm using STP it always works out pretty good and if it's not lined up right like you see on this once you get your bolt started most of the time you start tightening them it'll line up right because a lot of times your rod will twist and the piston not the rod and piston will twist on you makes it hard to do let me get these started and we'll go ahead and start tightening them and I'll get the torque spec for you okay guys for this particular motor Model 22, these are torqued at 185. That's all you need to do. Don't forget to bend the tabs back. We're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, now we're going to get ready to put the valve tappets in. You can see I got the tabs bent. Remember, don't get them mixed up. You put a little bit of STP want it like this, it'll hold it in place. Do the same thing on the other one. Put a little bit in the cam bearing back here. Well, you know you got them. nothing starting up dry. And don't forget to inspect your cam load for score marks or Anything else that might cause a problem. And then you want to get your timing marks lined up. Your timing mark on the camshaft is this little dent right here. You got a little slot cut in this one. there it's in time and go ahead and clean up your oil slinger spray it off and 
that's about where it's going to go. And we'll go ahead and get the uh, gasket put on here. Wipe out any dirt or anything that might have gotten in the bottom here. Then we'll get ready to remove this seal. Best way to do it, get a screwdriver up underneath of it and pry. Here's your old seal. Then you want to take your new seal, get it started. You can kind of feel it start a little bit. You want to take a socket about the same size. You pound it in. You want to look all the way around here. Make sure it's in there all the way. So I'm kind of dented it a little bit. It shouldn't matter too much. What will happen when you don't have a socket the right size. You want to be sure to put oil on this. That way your rubber's not on the shaft there and it'll heat up and burn out if you don't. I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning the gasket off of this and get ready to put it on there. Alright guys. I already put STP all over all the parts here. I already put I put a former gasket around both edges to fill in any possible leaks it might have, and it also helps hold the gasket in place. When your gasket sets your crankshaft in play. Always start with the thickest one to see what it is, and you, most of the time you can get by with that because basically what was on it to begin with. So we'll just see what it does here. Make sure you got plenty of oil down in here and on that new seal. ready to go back on there we'll put a couple bolts in it and check the end play see what it looks like 